Anon the Cuddle Slut. Rework. Whores do it for money. Life in Ponyville was never normal. Whether it be a bugbear attack, a magic duel, a chaos god visiting, or a battle between beings of extraordinary power, something in Ponyville was always happening. Even just recently, a bipedal monkey-like creature was found living in the Everfree Forest by none other than the baby dragon Spike himself. Now, he lived among them in the odd quaint village. This human anonymous, he preferred to be called, had built quite a reputation for himself. After participating in leading and repelling the Storm King's advance on Ponyville, he was seen as a force of good. However, his abrasive attitude, vulgarity, and overall unpleasantness made him a resident to avoid. Over time, he had mellowed out, but even the youngest folk could tell that Anon would rather be anywhere else at any given time. Anon was a natural loner. Ponyville's nightlife was practically non-existent. The dull chirping of crickets and other insects began to echo around town. The marketplace, which was once bustling with bargaining and laughter, now only held weary merchants packing up their booths. The lights in Ponyville's home came to life one by one to counter the coming darkness. Twilight Sparkle was taking an evening stroll around Ponyville. It was a strange compulsion she had ever since she was a filly, to walk and bask in the moments whether the light and warmth of the sun met and engage with the cool and quiet of the dark. She wandered around, waving at the merchants, listening to the noisy wildlife, and gazing at the street lamps around her. As her eyes danced across the city, she spotted an unusual sight. Anonymous, resting against the side of Sugar Cube Corner's wall. Good evening, Anon. Twilight greeted the tall man. She trotted closer to him, although she could swear that she saw him roll his eyes. It sure is nice out tonight. Not to be rude, but I didn't think I'd see you out of your house, let alone in the city center. Anon crossed his arms. Yeah, well, I'm entitled to go outside every now and then, right? He said in an almost accusing tone. Twilight gulped unconsciously. No, I mean, yes, of course you're welcome to explore Ponyville. Twilight stuttered. Twilight spent a good amount of time with Anonymous, so she recognizes this trick. Anon was attempting to make her feel guilty for even bringing up the question. Back then, it was a way to make her uncomfortable and get her to leave the asocial human alone. Now it worked a lot less, but still felt bad to confront. But I was just curious as to why you were out so late. Twilight pushed on in her conversation. I could never convince you to come out on your own. I just wanted to. Anon answered, short and to the point. And yet Twilight felt like it was elusive. Such an answer wasn't really an answer at all. Anonymous always did have an air of mystery around him, fitting for his name. It only made it harder to really understand him. Twilight figured that was the point. Twilight didn't want to leave the human alone, though, so she paid more attention to his disposition to find something that they could talk about. She noticed that Anon was in a suit and tie. That wasn't exactly out of the ordinary, he's worn it before. But there's only so many reasons to wear one, especially at night. Are you meeting someone tonight? Twilight asked, bracing for another non-answer. She was shocked to see a moment of panic in Anon's eyes, as they widened like a deer caught in the path of a runaway wagon. Anon shifted in his stance, pulling his body closer together. He took in a breath to calm himself as stealthily as possible. No. Anon answered finally. Twilight stood there, awaiting a deeper explanation that never came. Before Twilight could prod further, she was interrupted by a loud, Psst. Twilight looked to the corner of the building where Pinky was. Psst. Twilight! Over here! Anon pointed to Pinky with his thumb. Might want to go see what she wants. Twilight sighed exhaustively and trotted over to Pinky, doing her worst job at being discreet. As Twilight rounded the corner, she found Pinky pinning her back against the wall. Pinky, what is the- Twilight's mouth was lodged with a sudden pink hoof. Shush! He might be listening to us still. Pinky peered around the corner to find Anon glaring back at her. With a gasp, she ducked back around the corner. She eyed Twilight and motions for her to follow as she runs back into Sugar Cube Corner. Twilight sighs and teleports to Pinky's room. Despite instantaneous teleportation, Pinky had somehow managed to beat her there. Twilight found Pinky peering over the window, a pair of binoculars and hooves. She stared down directly on Anon's head. Pinky! Twilight shouted to get the pink pony's attention. What are you doing? Pinky briefly pulled herself away from her binoculars to address Twilight. Spying. She diligently returned to the act. Twilight stood in stunned silence. Why? Pinky again turned to Twilight. Because Anon's been acting strange these days. Just because some pony is acting strange doesn't mean you should just spy on them. Twilight trotted over and took the binoculars from the spastic mare. But you spied on me when I told you about my pinky sense. Pinky bit down on the levitating binoculars, which only carried her into the air. Twilight took the binoculars to try and pry them from her teeth, but to no avail. And I have since learned from that experience, Pinky. Anon is free to wander Ponyville whenever he likes without interruptions. Twilight glared at Pinky, still dangling from midair. With a whimper, Pinky falls to the floor. <sighs> You're right, Twilight. I shouldn't be spying on others. 
Pinky hunches over the windowsill, defeated. Twilight, a twinge of guilt in her stomach, trotted to Pinky's side and laid a hoof on her back. I know you and Anon have a... a unique dynamic, but sometimes it's best to just leave him be. Even when he's fighting with Miss Charlie. Yes, even when he's fighting with- wait, what? Twilight peered over the window's pane. Anon and Miss Cheerilee were indeed talking beneath them. The two ponies strained their ears to hear them. Oh, stop, Anonymous. Miss Cheerilee pleaded. Her dark coat failed to hide her increasingly rosy cheeks. You can't say such things in public. There's no one but us out here, Teach. Anon assured the mayor. He took her hoof in his hand. Besides, you know how good I am at being discreet. He gave Cheerilee a sly wink, which made the school teacher giggle nervously. Well, I am grateful for that. Cheerily rubbed her foreleg with a tepid hoof, as though she was afraid of what she might say next would scare the human away. I wanted to discuss our usual... payment. Anon nodded. Having trouble making ends meet again? Cheerily gave a guilty look. You know how hard it can be, living alone with no special sun pony to help pay the bills, and Mare Mare has been dotting me lately. Cheerily was set to continue until Anon pressed a finger to her lips. Hey, say no more, sister. As a bachelor myself, I can relate. Let's just say that you cashed in your rewards points for a free night, alright? Anon gave a slight wink to the mare, who blushed even harder. Anon! Before the flustered pony could say any more, Anon bent over and picked up the mare with a grunt. Now oh, come on, the night isn't getting any younger. Twilight and Pinky watched as the two made their way in the direction of Anonymous's home, just on the outskirts of Ponyville. Twilight stood in the window, jaw agape in shock. Pinky casually lifted Twilight's lower jaw to connect back with her upper jaw. Twilight shook from her daze. Did you see that, Pinky? Twilight nearly shouted, barely containing her bewilderment. Well, duh! Pinky responded. I was watching with you! Oh, y yeah, right. Twilight backed away from the window and started pacing the room. I want to be happy for Anon, but something about that conversation strikes me as... off. Pinky paced right behind Twilight. Well, what could have possibly been so off about it? Pinky asked. I mean, all that happened was that Anonymous and Shirley made a secret deal to meet in private for an unspecified service that would normally require payment. What's wrong with that? Twilight cast an unamused glance at Pinky. That's just it. What could Anonymous be doing that needs to be secret? So... Pinky dragged the word out with a grin. Are you saying that I was right to spy on him? What? No. Twilight quickly defended herself. Anonymous allowed to have his secrets, and we shouldn't go to Prianto's business. If he wants to... <laughs> pursue a romantic relationship with Miss Cheerley, then whose place is it for any pony to stop him? Well, maybe Mare Mare, Rosla, Clara Heartstrings, Bon Bon. Pinky listed off the names of several more mares in town, each one contorting Twilight's face in confusion. W wait Pinky, w what do any of them have to do with Anon and Cheerley? She finally interrupted. Oh, well Anon was talking to all of them the exact same way. The same way? Twilight cocked a brow. Uh-huh. Pinky nodded her head. For the past few days, Nani would just stand outside Sugar Cube Corner, just waiting. Then one of the mers around town would approach him, and then they would head back to Anon's house. Then Anon would come back right to Sugar Cube Corner and do it all over again with a different mare. The two sat in silence, letting Pinky's story hang in the air for a bit. After a silent deliberation, Twilight stood. I think we should go pay Anonymous a visit. Twilight said sternly. And spy on him? Pinky asked, hopefully. N no! Twilight yelled. We're going to have a talk with him about special sun ponies and how you should treat them. We can't just let him break all those poor hearts. Twilight made her way to the door. Are you coming, Pinky? Twilight turned to find the spastic pink mare rummaging through a chest in the corner of the room. Oh yeah, just grabbing a few things. By now, the night was fully upon the town. Luna's moon elegantly shone over the flora as Twilight and Pinky traveled down the dirt road towards Anonymous' house. The two traveled side by side with Pinky promising the whole way. Twilight was a bit confused to see that Pinky wasn't carrying anything, given that she held them up for some time to grab a few things. Ahead of them on the same dirt road was Miss Cheerilee, much to their surprise. Miss Cheerilee trotted towards them, her eyes closed, and a blissful smile stretched from ear to ear. Miss Cheerilee! Twilight called out up ahead. When Cheerilee saw the two mares approaching, Cheerilee's grin froze on her face, her eyes widened in shock and fear. She gave a tepid wave of her hoof and passed by them, hastening her trot. Pinky squinted towards the fleeing old mare. Suspicious. Very suspicious. Pinky rubbed at her chin with a hoof. Well, keep your suspicions to yourself, Pinky. Twilight's called, nudging the pony. We're here. Twilight pointed ahead to Anon's house. It was unimpressive against the backdrop of the night sky and the looming Everfree just beyond. Just a quaint little home for an abnormal stallion. The two mares stand just beyond the front yard, bushes lining the edges of a worn picket fence. 
So, Twilight? Pinky asks quizzically. How are we gonna do this? You take the front and I take the rear? Or maybe I use my charisma and charm while you tackle him from behind? Or maybe... Or maybe I just go and ask what's going on? Twilight asked, knowing that if she didn't interrupt, Pinky would have just kept going until Celestia raised the sun. This isn't some kind of secret mission, Pinky. <sighs> You're right. Pinky conceded, much to Twilight's surprise. Only that surprise was supplanted by a new surprise as Pinky suddenly picked Twilight up and dropped her into one of the bushes. It's my secret mission! I'm gonna go play the role of an innocent victim while you watch my flank. Pinky... Twilight started before Pinky bombarded her with equipment up to and including a pair of binoculars, two cans of soup tied to a string, a skin-tie catsuit, and a grappling hook. You're gonna need these suits on bait. Okay, love you, bye! Pinky rushed off through the front yard, a pink blur. Pinky! Twilight called out, exasperated by the pink one's sudden departure. With a huff, Twilight banished the idea of giving chase, as no amount of reason would sway a determined pie. Getting comfy in her bush, she noticed that she was left with both ends of the makeshift telephone. Twilight let out a deep sigh. Pinky punked the front door, gleeful but determined. She was gonna uncover the dark secrets that Anonymous held. Only one could imagine the horror that he was subjecting the poor mares of Ponyville to. Pinky shuddered as the images came to her, but with a shake of her head, she regained her resolve and knocked on the door. After a good ten seconds of continuous non-stop knocking, Anonymous opened the door. Oh, it's just you, Pinky. Anon commented. Yep, that's right, and no one else. Pinky turned a wink back at the bush Twilight was hiding in, in full view of Anonymous. He blinked away his confusion, learning long ago to never question Pinkie Pie. So, what brings you out here exactly? Anon leaned against the doorframe. Pinky hadn't noticed it until now, but Anon wasn't in his usual suit, but a silk bathrobe. It's the kind that Rarity often wears. However, both its material and design wasn't that of a bathrobe that you'd use for bathing. Regardless, Pinky didn't let Anon in sexy sleepwear distract her from her mission. Oh, you know I am here. Pinky asked knowingly, squinting at Anon with a pure intent of catching him in the act of... whatever act two was doing. Upon hearing those words, Anon perked up. He peered outside the door to his left and right before squatting down to Pinky's eye level. You saw the message then, did you? Anon started in a very hushed tone. The sudden change in his behavior caused Pinky to waver a bit. Um, uh, message? Pinky asked, hoping it didn't sound like she was asking. One in the town hall restroom? Anon asked, now growing suspicious of the mayor. Pinky started sweating bullets. We are talking about the same thing, right? Uh, pff, yeah, duh. I mean, what else could we even be talking about? Pinky rubbed a foreleg, her nerves being completely shot. Anon stood back up and crossed his arms. Oh yeah? What did the message on the restroom door say? Um... Pinky stalled. Her eyes darted between a million different ponies of uninterest. Finally, she uttered something. Call me for a good time? Anon blinked. I'm almost positive that you guessed that, but it was so close, I was almost impressed. Anand admitted, before swinging the door open a little more. Look, I finished the last of my appointments, and as long as you're not a narc, I can pen you in. Yes! Pinky leaped into the air triumphantly, stopping midair when she was face to face with an unamused human. She slowly fell back to the floor with a sheepish grin. <laughs> I mean, lead the way, my good man. Twilight could see Anand shake his head through the binoculars as he led the pink pony into his home. Once the door closed, that was the last of what Twilight could see. She then lowered the binoculars. After that, she yelped, as the zipper of the catsuit pinched at her skin. Why she humored Pinky and wore the suit was beyond even her, but she was more worried by what it meant that Pinky's clothes of all ponies couldn't fit her. Ooh, just getting into the meat and potatoes of what Anon is really doing. Just now to wonder what he's gonna do next. Anywho, let's get on to our superior donators. Top donators, Taco Cat 598 Peter Coldhard, Jaten Man, Darkseid, Gauntlet, and only one thing. Zar630, Strix, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Drake Love Dragon, Pastel Skies, Austin Rowland, CrazyKiller557, Stu Hex, Dospo, Madman Stan, Delta Omega, Jack Hedge, RuneSlife9852, Hansel Norman, Stephen Bingham, Line God12, and many more amazing people. Thank you all very much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.